Hello, good evening, and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. How is everybody doing tonight? I hope you're all well. Let's say hello to the chat. Good evening, Mystical Unicorn Painting. Hello, Super Sarah. Hello, Lornor. Welcome. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. So, tonight we are going to be taking a look at a, a different kind of game. But what game is that? We are going to be exploring the room lands of Colossal, the solo RP adventure game. Uh, very much looking forward to sharing this game with you this evening. Uh, and I invite you to join on in with me. So if you have access to a pen and a pad of paper, go off, go and grab those uh, essential items, because as I explain the game tonight, we're going to be learning how to play and actually having a game live so we can all share our adventure. So go and grab a pen and paper, Get yourself settled in for the next hour or so as we play Colossal. Good evening, Amberdon. Welcome. Mystical, you are so excited for this. Have you got your pen and paper? Are you all set and ready? I hope you are. Sarah, are you ready to join us? Is that an okay? Is that a, a good all set and ready? I'm going to take that as an okay then. All right, let's bring you on in. <laughs> Good evening, Sarah. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm fine. And this is going to go great unless I get mail at the door that I have to sign for. But it's a minute, but it's a figure. So if that counts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Well, we'll, we'll, we've got, just, just we got... a heads up. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you're, you're good at muting the mic. So we'll be okay. I'm sure. Cause the, the dogs, no doubt will go ballistic. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's jump to the table. Let's take a look at the physical items I have set out before me. And then we'll have a deeper look through the pages of the game. All right. So then let's press the right screen picture. Go to that one there. Okay. So here we go. So, um, basically I was introduced to this game. I think it was back in September when I went to uh, tabletop gaming live and I met with the designer, uh, Nick, uh, angle, who was a charming fellow. Uh, so, so excited to discuss and talk about his game. Uh, and his passion for it was so infectious that I just had to get a copy. <laughs> I wanted to basically go and explore this wonderful world that he had created. So all you need to basically play this game is the, the core rulebook, which I have just here. Uh, and that's really actually all you essentially need. There are the add-ons. So this is essentially the player's journal. And this is a deck of illustrated playing cards, of which we will take a look uh, more closely in a moment. These two, if you have a pad of lined paper, if you have an ordinary deck of playing cards, you're good to go. It's just the core book that you uh, need, essentially, to play the game. These are nice added extras, uh, and definitely well worth getting because it simplifies the playing of the game for you. So I'm going to move this out of the way and we'll just take a, a quick flick through uh, just to give you an idea a little bit of what the book is like. So this year, the book uh, is actually written and illustrated by Nick. Uh, he has essentially done everything. I get the impression he is... 
a, a one-man band on this, creating all of the artwork, created all of the rules. We will, like I say, take a closer look at some of these elements in a moment. But it's uh, it's nicely produced. It's very clean and clear uh, on what you need to do as you flick through. And the entirety of the book is, uh, well, basically, it's just 55 pages. illustrations were beautiful. Okay. All right. So only 55 pages is enough for you to basically be able to learn an exciting new game. All right. Uh, hello, Martin, over on YouTube. Uh, you picked up a copy with all the extras at the MCM Birmingham 2022. Excellent. And how has your gaming been with it? Have you been enjoying and good evening, Roger. Thank you for joining us. All right. So there we go. So that is the book. We're going to go look through that in a little bit more detail right now. Before we do that, this is the journal. As I say, this is purely optional, but it does help. It has everything laid out. So we have uh, the two main phases within the game to be able to fill out some details. We have a map section to be uh to illustrate and then of course we have a huge page for our journal entry and right at the start we have a, a little bit of a map here of the known room lands we have a little bit more at the back so this is purely optional uh as i say if you have just a pad of paper then you're good to go uh, at the back here there are several character sheet templates all right so everything you need is within this journal book but let us now head to the digital version of the book uh, because if you have maybe a tablet uh, and you might have one of the uh, PDF readers, you may be able to edit uh, and actually do your uh, your gaming digitally, uh, which you find is very handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick look through the book here in a little bit more detail in regards to creating our characters, just to give a bit of a flavour. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you uh, the character and the little adventure that I had over the weekend. Uh, because you you might have seen that I teased some uh, actual cards that I uh, drew from the deck. And maybe if you guys, if you any of you actually went and took a look and created a little story, then feel free to share it in the chat. I will share you mine, and then we will start on our adventure tonight. So again, if you've got uh, a pen and paper, go and get that at the ready. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I just want to read a little bit, a couple of paragraphs here from the opening section, just to set the scene, because this is what really excited me about the game. Okay, so here we go. The Colossal is an impossibly massive castle, the interior of which is so large that mountains, valleys, towns, cities, and even oceans fill its rooms. The ceilings and the roof are so high they are beyond sight, shrouded by the misty expanse of the sky that sits within its vaulted heights. There seems to be no finding the exterior of the castle, Though many adventurers have tried, crossing continental distances only to reach the wall of another room. For those who have ventured past the wall, they find only more rooms on the other side, with new lands stretching off far into the distance. That said, many features you would expect from the Colossal's normal-sized counterparts are present, such as staircases, windows, doorways, balconies, towering statues, burning braziers, 
pillars disappearing into the clouds and long, gloomy corridors. No adventurer has yet found their way to the rooftop, the battlements, which they suspect might grant them a view that sheds some light on the true nature of their world, but maybe you will be the first. I thought that was an amazing idea, and what instantly jumped to mind is this game is set in a world as if our character is essentially a little miniature on on near enough on our the floor of our own sort of rooms. Uh, I instantly pictured what would the world look like if you was a ten millimeter miniature in a, in a, a huge room that had been. Uh, kitted out with all the scenery, with the hills and the trees and all the terrain pieces. And I thought this was an amazing, <laughs> an amazing sort of uh, concept. Mystical saying, oh God, beware of cats. Yes, 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 yes. And this image on, the, on, on this starting page here, where you can see that massive skull set amongst the mountain range, when you think that the mountain range is to scale to the character in the foreground, how huge must be the person, I'm assuming, of that skull? Nerdy Toy Story. But yes, you, you, instantly you, you're starting to picture this world, aren't you, and where your character sort of fits in, yeah? Uh, and I just I did think that was absolutely brilliant. Martin, one of the best pen and paper roleplay systems I have played. You're on your second adventure. Oh, that, that's good to know. Good to know. So that uh, that bodes well for us. What do you think of this setting, Sarah? Has that got your imagination peaked? I mean, it involves a skull in a picture, so I'm I'm down. <laughs> all, all it takes is a skull, doesn't it? But right? yeah. yeah. The, the book also talks about uh, that all manner of threats exist out in the wilds, such as strange animals and beasts, and other barbaric or dangerous people. The greatest danger of all are the rooks, huge hulking stone automatons that patrol somewhat mindlessly out in the wilds of the Colossal's room. And you can actually see one of these rooks just beyond the tree line. It is the. I mean, instantly, I just think of some sort of at at eighty eighty Walker, um, but as a castle like shape, just stomping through uh, the the uh, the forests that obviously uh, cause destruction to the uh, to the villages and the cities uh, that are trying to have a sort of peaceful existence. Or a little bit, does it, did anybody remember that book and TV series called The Tripods? Does anybody remember that? I get that sort of uh, image as well. Okay, so then we go on and it talks about creating your character. And creating your character is a very, very easy task. The starting character has the following, a calling, a nature, a class, and a weapon. And how we go about creating a character is, is really easy. Uh, we just have to go through each of these prompts. And the good thing about a narrative roleplay game is that we are our game's own audience. It is for our sort of entertainment. So anything that we enjoy is kind of valid, um, but working loosely within the framework that the game provides. And everything is, is a prompt, is to give you an idea of what you could possibly do and where it might expand from from there, that point onwards. Though, of course, if you have a very firm idea of the type of adventure or, and character that you want to tell, then feel free, go ahead with it. So the first off is the character's calling. And this is basically what motivates your character to be an adventurer. So let's just bring that on here. So this is actually, if you have your pen and paper ready, this is where we can start. So I typically always start with giving my character a name. But you might find that a name comes naturally by the end of creating your character. So it's 
either or, but put a little bit of a section at the top of your paper to basically state your character's name. Now then, there are a variety of character callings, and basically what we would do is we would just draw a card from our deck. Uh, that would be a random selection, and we would pick the appropriate one. So let me just see if this is going to work for me. Let's do that. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. So I have the deck of cards just here, and I'm going to actually take the card from the bottom. And so what do we have? So we have an eight of clubs. And so we would look through the chart, and here we go, we see an eight. So this particular calling for a random character, let me just make sure, turn that off there, there we go. Uh, so to give you an example, most villages and people living in the Colossal have a passive opinion about the Rooks. They are simple wildlife and rarely seen, nothing to be too worried about. But not your village. Your village has hated all Rooks ever since one ploughed right through the centre of your homes, killing loved ones and disappearing into the night. Which is why your secret friendship with a very unusual rook would not go down well with the villagers if they ever were to discover it. You meet your friend in a nearby forest as often as you can. It doesn't talk, but it doesn't attack. It's not like other rooks, but you don't know why. One day when you pay to visit, it has gone from its usual place and there are signs of a scuffle and a trail leading off into the distance. You have to go and find it. So there you go, that's one of the possible character callings. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a, a, a few extra ones, so maybe you have a little bit of a, ch of a choice as far as what you want to state as being your character's uh, quest mission. Uh, though, of course, if you can think of a type of quest you want your character to go on, just write a, a brief sentence just to explain what type of mission, what is the overall all overarching mission that your character is going to be going on. So let's get some examples here. Um, so you have a vision as you sleep one night of a land on a far away room that looks nothing like the room your village resides in. And there is a tower and the tower is guarded by a rook. And in your vision, you see a weapon in a room at the very top of the tower, waiting, calling for you. Maybe this is a weapon that will help save your village. How about a map and a key is passed down in your family. The map covers a huge area and you can see multiple rooms and you've never seen the edges of your room. Five locations are marked on it with different colored glyphs. The locations look like ancient rook bodies, long since fallen, rotting like temples. The key is ornate and strange, with a rook symbol carved into its head. It looks like it would fit into a rook. Uh, here's one. You are a member of an order of knights. Knights have one job, but they are highly trained and, con and conditions to take on the rooks. And some are the greatest rook fighters of them all. Your superior in your order has called you into his office, and he has a mission for you. And let's do one more. It flew overhead, casting a shadow black as night in the middle of the day. The dragon rook, the only rook known to fly. You hear whispers and rumours of a party heading out to hunt it. They say if you can defeat it, you will gain the ability to fly, and you can't let them get to it first. All right, so there's a few examples, but of course you can create your own calling. Why has your character gone on this epic quest? What is making them go out, leaving the safety or the possible safety of their village to go out like a number nine, and explore? Ten. A number nine ten. Can you have you have you? Do you want me to read that one out, or have you already? Have you yeah, decided? I like that one. You're, you're going to go for that one. I'm so. gonna go for that one. 
So you're going for, as a child, your mother used to tell you stories of warriors with diamond skin, morphing weapons of magma and obsidian blades that never dulled. Their powers came from the fabled rock stones, ancient one-of-a-kind stones, hundreds of them made of different rock, crystal or gem, each holding a unique magical power. Uh, but now as an adult you know a little more and you're a little wiser to the world and you know that stories like that don't exist without a grain of truth. What if the legendary rook stones actually exist? So you're on a mission to basically find these fabled rook stones. Right? They are something of legend, but you believe the legends are true. And so you're going to venture out into the roomlands to basically find these rook stones. All right, so that, Sarah, is your overarching quest. So even though our adventures initially uh, will only be taking very small steps, but that is the ultimate payoff. That is what your character is going out questing My calling. for. Your okay. calling. All right. So we got that, and hopefully you guys in the chat, you have written down an idea of what your calling is. Maybe your character just seeks adventure. Maybe your character has been working on the farm uh, for all their lives and uh, all of their friends have gone away to, to war, to battle uh, other villagers. Maybe there is an oppressive empire uh, that they want to rebel against and they are yearning for adventure. And maybe they meet a wise old man and he then takes you off on this adventure, and who knows where that might lead. All right, so next we have your character's nature. And again, I will take a card from the deck just to give you an idea. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Was a new hope on at the weekend, eh? Possibly so. It's always on in this house. <laughs> okay, so what have we got here? Uh, I have the Nine of Clubs. So what does that is? We go to the chart up at the top. You can actually see these. So this is your character nature, what your character is like. And this random character is larger than life, tells exaggerated stories and roars with laughter. But there is a whole variety. Uh, Happy-go-lucky, extremely optimistic and fun. Impatient, quick to anger and grumpy. Brave, by the book, serious, with no sense of humour. Introspective, quiet, mysterious, a person of few words. Sly, strategic and always planning. And salt of the earth, common folk, finds it easy to talk with anyone. Again, these are just prompts for you to be able right. to have an idea of what type of person your character is. Do I pick one of those or, or am I drawing a card? Um, you can, you can. Oh, do you have a set of deck of cards yourself then? <laughs> no, but you do. And you can like hold up four and I can pick one. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay. okay. So here we go. I'm, I'm going to do that one for you. So that's 10 of spades. So unless you, it's horrible. Unless it's horrible. <laughs> so you are larger than life, tells exaggerated stories, and roars with laughter. Well, all right. All right. <laughs> but your character's nature can be whatever you want it to be, because it's your story. Again, the rules are prompts. They are to if you're if you're not a if your imagination is not firing in this particular aspect, you can come to a chart and it can give you an idea. And that's the idea of it. All right. Okay. So again, everybody, have you created a nature for your character? Do you have a, a general idea of what they are like as a person? Just jot that down. Y'all have cards and you pull one. I'm sure he can reread you what it is. If you do have a card, I can quickly tell you by all means. Let me just double check. Can here. I vote to change mine to number one? You want to be happy-go-lucky, extremely optimistic yeah. and fun. Well, go on I think on that there. goes more with my... I think that goes more with my calling of trying to find magic rocks. Okay, then. There you go. And sparkly skin. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's the thing. It's your story. It's what works for you. Okay? So, rules are there to guide you, um, not to constrict you. I think that's the best way to look upon it. 
All right, so we then have the character's class. And this is quite interesting. Uh, let's just bring this across. Ooh, there we go. Because we have essentially four classes within the game. And each Excuse class... Me. I have someone actually at my house right quick. If you guys could continue with this for one second. No problem. Manda, take notes for my character. I'll return in a few minutes. I am so sorry for this. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through the classes, all right? And basically, this is what's going to determine what type of character you have and their character traits. And essentially, there are four. There are There is the armed which we're looking at here. We then have the followed. I'll just move this one across. We have the helmed. Oh. And finally, we have the mounted. Do that. All right, so those are the four that we're going to go for. And the class determines uh, what your exploration and combat scores are going to be in the game. And it also gives you more of an insight of the type of person uh, you are in the game. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. All right, so we have the armed. Now, no matter what class you go for, you want to put a little section on your pad, which is for exploration and one for combat. And essentially, you're going to be putting a number from one to five on those sections. All right, but let's give you a little bit of an idea as to the armed, because as you can see, the Armed has a score of 4 for combat because, well, it's in the title, they are armed. Uh, and their exploration is free. And basically, the Armed, they are bonded with a Rook Arm. This process is called the grafting. And this Rook okay, Arm... Okay, I'm back. We're just, we're just explaining the Armed. So this is okay. the, the first of the four character classes that you can be. The armed essentially has an arm of a rook that is sort of bonded to their armor. And this essentially acts as an additional weapon. So as much as you, you'll be carrying maybe potentially two weapons in your hands, this is a weapon that uh, works along with you. This can be a melee weapon. It could be a ranged weapon. It's whatever your imagination uh, allows it to be. But the great thing about it is that it works with you uh, as you are in combat. So I would kind of think of this as a, <laughs> a sort of one-legged uh, Iron Spider accessory uh, from the Marvel movies. If you're familiar with the Iron Spider, imagine that <laughs> four of his other legs have been ripped off. <laughs> So that's how I, I, I visualize that, it. Go that, on. Um, I need to fire my dogs. <laughs> fire your dogs? <laughs> yes, my husband informed me, oh, there's people here. Can I show them his car and all this stuff? And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in the middle of the street. Oh, okay, fine, whatever. I went out there. No one was there. But somehow some people were able to back a full-blown trailer into my backyard Unhook it from their truck, leave it in my backyard, and relock my fence, and not a single bark. <laughs> but yes. heaven forbid, a ladybug lands on the window, and then they lose their minds. You definitely, you need new dogs. But for guarding, not particularly good. For snuggles, awesome, yeah? All right. What? Like, what? <laughs> okay, so. Oh. The armed. So here we go. Get some prompts here. So are you a hunter who felled their first rook and you wish to wear the arm as a trophy? Uh, did you lose a limb of your own in battle when you were young and have the rook limb fitted as a replacement? Is the rook arm a family heirloom passed down your family line when the previous owner falls in battle? Uh, 
Are you the latest to claim it? Or is there something you must do first before you are worthy? Alright. So ultimately, the armed, you're going to get an exploration score of 3 and a combat score of 4. And you are going around with some kind of weapon that so is attached to you. So wait. If my explore score is going to equal what? It depends if you're going to take it's what character class will you're going to choose from. So this is four classes, and depending which uh -huh. one you go for, you will have different scores. So we've just explained the first one, which is the armed. Okay. So the next class. Is oh, the, I get is, to kill it and then wear its skin. You get, you get to, you potentially might have killed the Rook and you get to use its uh, mechanical arm. The Rooks are powered by magic. So you then have an additional arm that could have a sword attached to it, or it could well, maybe I'm have... Well, I'm looking for Rook Stones, so wouldn't that make sense that I would do that? Possibly, but let's take a look at the other character classes, because maybe oh, another okay. one of these might be more suited. All right? So the next, right. Cla the right, next Amanda, class... Keep that one in the banks. <laughs> The next class is the Followed, okay? So these have different scores. It has an Exploration of 5 and a Combat Score of 3. Uh, the Followed are very capable explorers, proficient in tracking, survival, and navigation. But more imp most importantly, they have a Rookling Companion. It's like a, a mini Rook that follows them around uh, and that does uh, helps them where it possibly can. And if they go into combat, it tries to help and it can maybe defend or attack with them. Uh, the Rooklings have a really good knowledge of the Roomlands and maybe uh, you could tell a Rookling that, hey, I need to find a, an inhabitant. And the Rookling has an idea where that inhabitant may be and away you go. So maybe you are the following, <laughs> or maybe they follow you. All right. Let's uh, let's get some ideas here. So does your village or clan hate rooks? And did you have to keep your bond with a rookling secret? Does your rookling have something special about it? A strange crest or a hand that looks like a key? Is your bond with your rookling a reluctant one? Does it follow you, but you wish it didn't? All right. Aww. I know, I know. The rook, I think that I, I like the followed, and you'll actually see that my first character is a followed uh, character class. But the important point is you have exploration of five, combat of three. All right, next one is the helmed. So the helmed have an exploration of two and a combat score of five. All right. The Helmed are the closest to wizards or alchemists in the world of Colossal. Understanding the magical properties of rooks and how to harness them is partly a pursuit of arcane knowledge and also one of logic and crystal engineering like magical circuitry. So basically, what the Helmed do is they take uh, magical elements from defeated rooks and put them into a helmet to which then they are able to manipulate the magical energies. See, why, why make a helmet when you can just wear all their skin? Wear, wear their skin? Yeah, the first one, isn't it? Oh, it, it's, it, you're not wear, you're not, you don't wear the skin, you just have an arm from a rook attached to you. Okay, so it, you don't it, wear the skin. What happened? I'm sorry, it cut out on Discord. Yeah, you don't have the have the skin. You basically have one of its arms attached to you, so you have an extra weapon arm. That's the important thing about the armed. Okay, no skin, just an extra arm. So you just run around with the butt arm, and then like <laughs> when you twirl your skirt, you just have this like floppy arm twirling about like a tail. <laughs> But it, but the arm is under your control, so you're able to use it as a weapon or to use it as an extra hand to it help took, you climb. Just so everyone knows, it took me a second to realize that an arm, that a butt arm would just be a tail. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Here we go, Rogue is saying, <laughs> you have three arms, Sarah, instead of two. 
Uh, Mystical saying you can slap people with it. Indeed, you can. You could equip your. They normally arm. call it a. They normally call it a third leg, but <laughs> ew, sorry. I'm. Let's. I don't think that's a class for me because I. We don't need to go flopping around appendages at people. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's not for you. So the helmed. The helmed is your magic user. You're able to utilize the magic that you've managed to get from a defeated rook. All right, so exploration of two, combat score of five. All right, the final, the final class that you can go for is the mounted. So exploration score of five, combat score of two. So like the helmed, the mounted are gifted rooksmiths with a basic understanding of their functionality. But unlike the Helmed, who have an understanding of the magical circuitry and therefore magical abilities of the Rook, the Mounted have a mechanical one. So the Mounted are nomads and scavengers, constantly on the hunt for felled or ancient decaying Rooks, and harvesting parts for their own mount, partly to upgrade and partly just to keep it going, as mounts require constant maintenance, like off-road vehicles. A mounted mount is their heart and their life. Looking like looking after a bike or a beloved car, it is everything. It is their freedom. So this mounted, as you can see by the illustration, is it's cobbled together parts from a defeated rook so that it can be used as a, a, a walker. But that's just one example. Maybe your mounted uh sort of ride is maybe it's a bike or maybe it's a car type of contraption so, it could be so whatever you helmed, want the helmed they were the ones that made the helmet with the magic with the magic yes the mounted okay. so essentially very very basically the armed have an extra arm for combat the followed have a Rooklyn companion, but they are great uh, explorers and survivalists. The helmed have access to magic, and the mounted have access to a vehicle. All right, that's the choice of what type of character you might want to be. So what do, what are you thinking, Sarah? I mean, yeah, I think I would get in trouble with an extra appendage. Let's all be honest. Okay, so no, so you're definitely not going to be the arm. Um, and I don't think I want to be the mounted. Okay, I, now I'm surprised at that. I would have thought that you would have gone for that. I mean, I might, though. I don't know. Do I want a puppy or do I want a car? See, these are the two like choices <laughs> that are very difficult to make. <laughs> Everybody has to make this choice at one point in their life. So what is it going to be? Uh, uh, yeah, you've simplified it nicely. Is it a puppy or a hot rod? What do you want? I don't want a puppy, though. You want my a pu character's name is Sunflower. I don't know if we needed options or to create our own, but I made my own name. That's good. That's good. That's, a, that's the whole point. Okay. So, so Sunflower, happy-go-lucky, very optimistic, and is looking for magic rocks to make fun weapons and sparkly skin. <laughs> I think she'd want a puppy. Okay, so you're going to go for a followed. All right, let's go and just go back to that. That's so, the class, correct? So your class is the followed. Your exploration score is five, and your combat score is three. All right. See, you, you, we're nearly there. So the only thing you need to do now is to give your character a weapon. And your weapon can be anything you can think of, but you want to keep that weapon in the realm of medieval style. So it's a sword or a bow or a crossbow or a staff. Um, what, what other sort of medieval weapons? A scythe, nunchucks. Uh, uh, chat, have you got any ideas of medieval weapons that might be yes, suitable? Yes, it could be fun because I could also chop down flowers with it to make flower crowns. A glitter bomb. But then also <laughs> take some souls. Okay. Glitter bombs, are those a thing? <laughs> those can blind and cause serious damage, not to mention the cleanup. <laughs> Because oh, technically, glitter bombs would be tiny little shards of metal. They would, wouldn't they? And you would be able to blind people with it. 
Wow, okay. That, that is... Oh, snap. Now we're getting somewhere, guys. Now we are actually getting somewhere. <laughs> there's, there's no reason why not, okay? It's your story, right? So you can do what you like in it. But remember, we want to keep the setting in this sort of medieval uh, Could realm. I maybe... But, uh, but Could I ju maybe have... You're like, justifying you know, it, which I like. Maybe like a, like a smaller scythe, so it's not quite undertaker size yeah but it's a little bit more heavier duty than just a gardening scythe okay yeah go for it if that I, makes I, sense I, and, and, and then could i have little like glitter bomb canisters that are like refillable <laughs> well, well okay so if you if you want to have your your glitter bombs how many are you going to have are you going to limit them because remember you're just starting off on your quests so maybe, maybe. Right, but it's the like they're saying in chat, one. like you could put anything in it. Like it could be like as long as you can go and collect it or whatever, you can like pretty much, you know, put any pieces of anything in it. Okay. Oh, oh, what would uh, that be uh, though? What would that be? Not necessarily a bomb. What would it be like? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a grenade, isn't it? <gasps> oh, there you go. Glitter and clay pot, like little clay balls. That would make sense, and that's actually yes. something that could be made. Ha ha ha! But how many would I? I think you should only, well, maybe you should only have a few because you're just starting off. You don't want to be too overpowered to start in your adventure because otherwise you are able to accomplish everything and that's not great, is it? You want to have some challenges. So maybe do you manage to get hold of one before you left your village, right? But you know how to make more. You just need the components to make more, so which then, like of course, gives, which, give, which gives you the challenge to go forward, doesn't it? Chat says five or four. Why don't we go with three then? <laughs> go with three. I think, yes, I think you should have it on the lower side, but there we go. <laughs> okay. So, all right. No, this is good. This is good. And chat, I hope you, you're coming together with and, and forming your own character. So we had those yes, four They are points. all invested in mine now. <laughs> they, 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 may, they may well be. They may well be. Which so is basically, fine. Y'all can help me with mine. And yes. <laughs> so basically what you needed is a name for your character, the calling, a nature, a class, and a weapon. We've gone through those uh, five aspects. So essentially you have created your character and you could fill this into your character sheet. Uh, or onto your pad of paper. Now, the next section in the book, go to it, refers to magic. And within the world of Colossal, there are three types of magic that are found to power the rooks, and that is electric, rumble, and ice. Okay, so the magic that powers the helm is one of those three types. So if you decided to go for a helmed character, then you want to choose what type of magic. And typically you'll you'd get you would have got these abilities uh, from defeating a rook of that kind. And then the helmed basically takes that magic and you are able to manipulate it. But what, what is What section of the sheet does this go under? I just put this under notes. Oh, okay. All right. It's just so it's a reminder because this is an important part here. And again, this is something that's uh, sort of repeated throughout the, the book here is that in Colossal, magic is simply for flavor to enhance your stories with incredible sights and scenes. As you will see in the combat rules, it is a type of attack that you or an opponent can do. But this is purely for descriptive purposes. For you to have fun thinking about how a lightning strike from a rook might look, or how your character dodges an ice crystal hurled at them in battle. All right. So again, it's to it's to give you creative prompts on what you might want to do in your story. All right. So if you decided to go for the helm for the magic. Then you have one of three choices, electric, rumble, and ice. And you want to think of how your character might use those magical abilities, how you might describe them in any sort of combat uh, situation you may face. All right, but let's, uh, let's carry on. In fact, we're getting to the point here. Oh, I'm going to sort of 
share it up with you and then I'm going to jump to the character that I created to sort of be able to show you everything we've done so far in practice because this is essentially now how we play the game the exploration rules and basically what will happen is we will draw up a number of cards equal to our exploration value so Sarah you went for uh you went for the the followed wasn't it did you go for the followed? Yes. So you have an exploration score of five, right? That means in this section, you would draw up five cards. And those cards basically act as prompts. Now, it is for each player to sort of determine what the period of time th those cards represent. It could be an entire day. It could be a month. It could be only a couple of hours or minutes all right so to have a, a bit of an idea of a sort of a time value because depending on your character class is however many cards you're going to draw up and those cards then refer to a series of prompts and as you can see there is basically a prompt for each of the cards within the deck and within each suit as well uh, red cards are organic things, people, and creatures, while the black cards are scenic things, structures, and objects. And there's a whole variety here for us to look through, but I think the easiest thing is I will show you the example that I put up uh, with my character so you can get an idea of how things play but ultimately as, as I've said numerous times these are prompts these are to help you have an idea of how you want to create your little story uh, yes I think we will jump to we'll jump to the other screen so let me just change this over hoping that all of this works here we go then okay so hopefully you might have something a little bit like this um, this is me filling out the actual character sheet but basically, uh, I chose my character as uh, a young adventurer called Crimson. Uh, she is a follower class. And What's your she last name? <laughs> uh, I, 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 did, I did have to do Google Translate for me to be able to hear it said. Uh, so it's Crimson Haikonen. Hi Hi okay. Crimson Haikonen. Uh, because in my mind... I was I was actually watching a movie on Netflix which was set in Scandinavia and so I was thinking of that wonderful uh, sort of uh, Norwegian coastline, the fjords and the large mountains. Uh, so that's the part of the Roomlands that my character is originating from and where she is going to be adventuring through. So she has had a vision and she has... Um, seen in her dreams a far away room that looks nothing like where she has grown up and uh, in there there is a weapon and she is after trying to find this weapon that hopefully will help her uh, bring peace to her village so she is t has taken it upon herself she is going out into the wilds to basically go and find this weapon uh, the thing is Go over here. So I've put on in because she is the followed. Um, she has exploration score of five and she has a combat score of three. And then her nature, again, this was drawn up by cards, uh, was the introspective, quiet, mysterious person of few words. Okay. Yours is wearing a lot less clothes than what I wrote down for my character. <laughs> I just went with the imagery that was in the book. I just grabbed it. But of course, 
it's a, every opportunity for you to actually create and, and draw your own character. Uh, and you could draw your own Rook companion or your mounted vehicle, whatever that might be. So it's all open for you to be able to explore as you see fit. So I get, obviously gave her a wooden staff and uh, she's wearing leather armor and sort of cloth wraps as the uh, the picture. And then as part of my notes, because she's followed, she has her Rookling companion called Rook. Uh, and I put a little bit of detail on Rook. So Rook is mainly a defensive Rookling, always looking to try and protect Crimson and has a magic type of ice. So uh, Rook maybe makes walls of ice or blasts ice storms out uh, to try and defend her. Uh, so a little bit of text. A loyal Rookling companion, Rook has been with Crimson for the past seven seasons since she discovered it, damaged and alone to the west of the village at the edge of the unexplored region. Rook has a symbol of a giant bird of prey upon its chest. All right, and currently she has no treasure. So that's my character sheet, and hopefully uh, yours is something similar in terms of the detailed information that you need to play. So the next day, what were the different type of rook magic that our little people could have? That's not ice, because I don't want to be completely copying you. Oh, you don't want to copy me? Okay, you can have. Uh, so obviously it was ice, it was electric, and rumble. Okay. Got it. But 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 here we go. Just to just to add even more flavor, uh, taking this directly from the book, there are legends that speak of other special rook stones somewhere out in the world. Unlike the standard rook stones, of which there are many of each type, these special rook stones are the one of a kind and confer unique abilities to the rooks that bear them. Perhaps if someone was to defeat one of these rooks, they would get that unique power for themselves. So, as much as you, your character is aware of many types of rooks that have electric and rumble and ice magic, there are other rooks out there that do have other abilities. Can't give them that ability if we don't know what it is yet. Well, that's it. So when you're starting off, right, you're just going to have maybe one of those basic ones. But ultimately, you may find a rook stone that gives you another ability. Maybe you find a fire rook and you are now able to incorporate fire into your adventures. All right. Again, it, this is all just to get you thinking, to get you exploring, uh, let your imagination go. But you've got to start somewhere, starting with those three. Maybe during the course of your adventures, you get to in introduce another type of magic. So, let me see if I get this right. So we've got our, our character. And basically, I started obviously playing, drawing up cards from uh, the deck. And let me just do I, bring... do I have to read my character sheet? Oh, we will do in a, in a second, but I just want to exp okay. just show this as an example of how the game plays, just so we, everyone gets a bit of an idea, and then we will go through your character for sure. So let me just bring. Uh... that up there. There we go. I have my deck of cards just here. All right. So, because my exploration score is five, I get to draw five cards. So I start with the first one. I'm just going to put that here. And we have a dead body. Okay. And... You have the option that when you discover an item like this, you could actually explore. So I basically drew up another card, which gave me an Eight of Hearts. And that referred to me finding a potion upon the dead body. 
I'll then draw up my next card, which is a strange mechanism. Which is a five of spades. Then draw up the next, which is a five of diamonds, which is another dead body. Now, the difference between the uh, hearts and diamonds suits is that hearts typically is a item that you may get. And there is a chart basically uh, showing you what different types of items. And so I picked up a potion, but the diamonds refers to an event happening. So I draw another card, which is a nine of spades. And it prompts me that an event that something breaks. All right. I then draw up another card, which is the six. Yeah, it was sounding real fun, Mystic, until now. Which was a six of of spades, which is a trap. And my final card. is an ace yeah, of diamonds. Things took a turn for... for real, real shady stuff here. <laughs> Which gives us a cultist. So those are the cards that I drew completely randomly from the deck at the weekend to create my story. All right. Now, when you are presented with these cards in front of you, it is up to you as the player on how you want to experience these cards, in what order, and to weave sort of your narrative through them. So as I said, your time period, this could be the course of a day. This could be maybe just, you know, five or ten minutes, right, of a little bit of adventuring. It's completely up to you. It's wherever your imagination takes you. Now, I did meet another person and as much as it says a cultist and there is a description for uh, an actual particular cult that exists within this world the way that i like to think of this card is that's essentially you meeting a person and if you remember the heart uh, suit means that it is a benefit so it's maybe it would be somebody friendly who you would meet whereas the diamonds is typically an aggressive uh, encounter. And so uh, we ultimately know that this person, whomever it might be, is not necessarily on our side or has our best interests in mind. All right. So we already have a little bit of an idea of what type of person that might be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a cultist because again, it's our story. It's where we set our character so if, for example, we started off our adventure along the coastline of one of these um, areas in the Roomlands, maybe this represents a pirate, or maybe a sailor, or somebody in, in, uh, in one, of, uh, t uh, one of the uh, little villages, maybe it's a farmer, it's whomever we want it to be. Or if you do want to go down the line of it being a cultist, then that's completely up to you. And that's absolutely fine. All right. So, because I know that he, uh, this person was uh, an adversary of some kind, I decided I would be going into combat with them. And so I went to the charts and basically found out what this person's intention was with me and it was to steal from me, okay? Uh, and I found out that the type of weapon that they were carrying was a melee weapon. So again, these were from random cards while I uh, was able to determine this. So from all of this, I was then able to create my story. So let me... I'm just going to bring that up there because, there, as I say, there is a section for drawing a map to try and give help you visualize how your story may uh, play out. So I grabbed a few little images from the internet. Oh, 
Let's just bring that down a bit. There we go. All right, so uh, <laughs> I've put together my story in visual form. <laughs> um, uh, and so I guess ultimately, once you have got your cards laid out, once you have an idea of what is going to happen, all right, it is then a case of you telling that story. All right, so here we go. Here, here is my story from those five cards. Oh, typical. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I don't want this to be be in this story, says Mystical. Okay, but here we go. Light from the, the twin braziers shone down, illuminating the forest, light sparkling from the dewdrops in the early morning. Crimson had made camp at the edge of the forest the previous evening, not wanting to venture into its dark depths so late in the day. In the morning light, the once foreboding place looked inviting and magical. Packing up camp with renewed vigour, she strode purposefully into the forest along with the forest path, Rook following a short pace behind, darting from bracken to bush, playfully mesmerised by the twinkling dew. Before too long, the path had vanished, and Crimson was forced to forge her own way through the wooded undergrowth. It was then that she came upon a dead body, partially hidden under the ferns. Cautiously, she approached Rook's standing defensive guard. The body was that of an old man, dead for some time. He had already played host to the creatures of the forest, offering a bounty of delicious treats. Carefully searching his person, Crimson discovered a sealed flask. Upon breaking the seal, she caught the whiff of a strong aroma that had the strange effect of enhancing her senses. The world seemed brighter, sounds clearer, and smells richer. All from a sniff, dare she take a gulp. Pocketing the flask, and thankful of her good fortune, the companions continued deeper into the forest. Parting the undergrowth with her pole, Crimson stepped back with a shock as the pole uncovered another corpse. One dead body is regretful, two is more than a coincidence. All of her past experiences were screaming not to go closer, yet the possibility of more magical loot was too much to resist. Carefully searching the deceased traveller, Crimson did not notice the near-invisible thread attached to the garments, breaking triggering a strange me mechanism that bound her hands and lifted her aloft into the boughs of the trees above. It's a trap! Damned her curiosity and greed, she thought, swinging vulnerably high above the ground. As soon as the trap sprung, Rook panicked, darting from tree to tree beneath her, trying to save his friend, but to no success. The exacerbated Rookling whimpered with defeat, looking up at his companion. Might she be the latest victim of the forest, she thought, slowly rotating like a pig on a spit. I'll be taking that potion you acquired, declared the hooded stranger, perched upon the bow opposite, opposite her, their eyes twinkling with satisfaction. And that's as far as I got. <laughs> so you wrote that? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so that is that is the first part of my story, working from the cards, right? Oh, that, no, I don't think I'm drew. going to be good at this at all. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine, right? Because you don't have to write as much as I did there, right? You can write You're so, so much You're so, like, descriptive and into it, and I wrote dress that twirls with pockets. Like... That's fine. What? That's it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. It's your adventure. So it's it's absolutely fine. Um, now, I could draw up cards because, of course, the next part of my journal entry would be the combat, potentially, that I might face with this cultist. Or maybe I don't end up uh, fighting the cultist, or sorry, the, the stranger. Maybe it's a case of that... Uh, they take the item, do they let me go, or do I have a, a bag put over my head and find myself waking up somewhere else? 
who knows the cards will uh, will give us a uh, the next part of our story all right but that gives you an idea of how you can use the cards that you're given to basically create a little bit of narrative uh, to put down into your journal. It does not need to be as long as that. In fact, I, I, I think I found that I was typing <laughs> and I was just getting into it and suddenly realizing, hang on a second, I haven't mentioned any of the cards yet. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so... Does everybody have a character? Let's. Oh, in fact, Sarah, what we should do then is we should go to your character, shouldn't we? <laughs> I'm okay, reading your, your I'm text going, in chat. <laughs> oh, I'm going to exit out of Discord and exit back in because it's muting you to me almost every other word you say. Okay, yes, you, you, you go and do that. Okay, and we'll see you back in a second. Okay, I hope that makes it better. All right, are you back? Yes. All right. So yes. let's let's collect these up. Oh, did you read my ch what what I yes. wrote in chat? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> yes, I did. All right. So then, does everybody in chat who who wants to play along, do you have your character already set up? Do you want me to remind you? of any of the elements to creating your character whilst uh, people are, are writing in chat. Sarah, you tell us all about your character. Who have you created? So, my name is Sunflower Sprout, because you had a last name, so I figured I needed one. This is where it starts going downhill real fast. No, 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 it's so all good. So, the class is followed. Yeah. My character's wearing a dress that twirls with pockets, but then also has like a utility belt with more pockets and places to put stuff and attach things to. Good, for okay. For hands-free doing activities. And then, so my calling was, it was because my mom would tell me stories of the warriors with diamond skins and how there's rookstones with magic. And so I went out to go find all this stuff because I was like, no, nah, it has to be real. And I guess on some adventures, I found a rookling, which then told me that yeah this little magic creature thing clearly my mom's stories are real so might as well keep seeing what's out there and he's real fun he helps he helps protect me but he's also funny and likes to do little silly things to to make me laugh and he's electric and my have a scythe like a little scythe but still like a strong scythe and then some bombs that are full of little metal shavings we would call it glitter <laughs> Okay, no, this is this is awesome. Okay, so this is great. So I'm out looking for for more magic stones and stuff since I've already, from what I can tell, my mother's stories were real. Okay, so you're you're maybe we can find maybe we can get sparkly skin someday. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, then. If that if, if that's your keep, motivation. <laughs> but we keep talking of of my mom told me these stories and everything kind of in a past tense, so I assume my mother is no longer with me, which is probably why I'm just like screw it, let's just go see what's out there. <laughs> you see, and and maybe maybe. You just know your mum as as mum. But maybe when oh, yeah. mum was younger, she was a amazing adventurer and she has seen the world. But when she uh, had you as a child, she had to put, away, put to one side those adventuring days because you were the most important treasure she could ever possibly hope for. But Where do you think I found the utility belt? Oh... Right? Yeah. So, so, so again, so creating your character, it's great to have all these ideas. They don't have to appear in this first little section, but it's something that you've got in the back of your mind that you can touch upon and that informs the types of things your character may do. Because there may be a reveal in maybe two or three uh, adventure pieces further down the road. But it's great that you have all this thinking about your character before you get started. There's so much that, uh, you know, uh, could be hidden. Uh, but, you know, all the many layers to your character. Because your, your character's like an onion. It's got layers. <laughs> okay. 
So, in fact, I was I was going to put, put up and create a character, but I actually think your character is great. So we're going to just work with your character and keep it streamless. Guys in the chat, do you have your characters? Do any of you have any questions? Just before we get started into the actual exploration. Mystical, did you create a character? Are you, are you playing along? How about you, Roga? Let's see. It's, it's probably more trying to make sure I keep... <laughs> She's keeping you on track. <laughs> yeah. So, Mystical, you're invested in messing up, I mean, following along with Sarah's character. <laughs> okay, well, that's, all, that's To be fun. fair, any messing up you think you might be doing would just be helping me. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, that's good. All right, then. And, Roga, you're going off Sarah's as well. All right, no Oh, problem. we're all in trouble. All right. We're, we're all on board with your characters. So let's see where... Um, sorry, what was her name? Was it Su Sunflower? It's Sunflower Sprout. Sunflower Sprout. Let's see the How adventures. How would you forget it? The Adventures of Sunflower Sprout. Okay. When so, I introduced myself, I'm pretty sure I twirled and showed you that my dress had pockets. You did. You did indeed. You might think that that's off, but any female watching this knows exactly that. Yes, that's what you do. <laughs> okay. So, because you're 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 sort of taking the lead here, uh, what is your exploration score? Exploration score is five. Okay. So. Combat score is three. Just so we all know, Chad, my character is very fun and bubbly, but let's be honest. <laughs> She's probably more like me and also likes a little gore situation. So we have the first card. It is six of clubs and it's a trap. No, boy. We have the seven of clubs. It's a cave. I have I have shuffled these. Let me just do these again because <laughs> they feel like they've not been shuffled at all, and they have. Are we redoing? Are we redoing a draw? Okay, yeah. Let me. Yeah. Okay, I put a line through it. Let's go. Let's try the. We've created such a cute and fun fun character. Death, 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 death. <laughs> 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 well, well, this is the thing is, you know, it's ours. Well, it's your story, isn't it? So it can be whatever you want it to be. My rook's name is Puppy, by the way. Puppy? Puppy! Puppy. Oh, Puppy. Sorry. Like a puppy. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to give these another shuffle. Puppy. Puppy. <laughs> ah. Right, let's see what we get. No, I don't think I, I don't think I want no, I don't think Puppy is a good name. <gasps> Poppy! Alright, taking it Poppy. from chat. It's Poppy, that's it, because that's another flower. We have a theme. Okay, here we go. So we have Poppy, that's a good one. We have a city. Alright. Alright. We have a door. Okay, this is seeming like a better adventure. Alright. We have a wild animal. Always can make new friends. Okay. All right. We have the card for the cultist, but remember, it can be a person of any kind, whatever fits your story. Uh, but it's going to be an adversarial person. All right. We'll go into a little more detail in these in a second. And then we have the sea. Hmm. All right, so let's just get yeah. some descriptions. Is that a boar? I haven't had good, I haven't good run-ins with a boar recently. It hasn't been good. Well, remember, it's a wild animal. So let's just it take a look. It doesn't have to be a boar? It doesn't have to be a boar, no. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so, so what we have here is the city. And because of the nature of the card, it's a thriving city. It's an inhabited city. It's a city that's doing well. You come across a city, a huge settlement unlike anything you have ever seen before. Buildings constructed from rook parts, seemingly motorized vehicles and mechanisms on every corner. And best of all, shops, culture and hunters, a place of commerce, trade and meeting. Can I ask a question about these rooks? Yes, go ahead. So if I have a baby rook or a little rook following me around and it's my friend and we and we love each other. Yeah. 
why am I am I attacking them? Are they not nice? Okay, all right. I'll, I'm glad you asked this question. Let's 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 uh, let's let's delve a little I bit don't... deeper into the lore. So hang on a second. Hang okay, because I don't know if I want to be taking my tiny friend to a place where people are living inside of like bigger him's body parts. Like that's not nice. Right. Okay. No, it's good. Good question. You've got. But this I'm is concerned. Where... So, so, so here, here is the the answer. We're going to go through the rules here. Uh, just flick through. So, oh, there we go. There's an idea of the city that uh, we are going to be exploring. So you can see a, a mechanized vehicle there that actually has a ruckling that is uh, moving the cart along, and you can see all the different hands and arms from rooks that are helping the traders uh, sell their wares. And in fact, you can see some of the battlements that are parts of rooks that have been defeated. All right, but let's uh, let's carry on through. Because, 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 there we go. So again, to give you an idea what a rook actually is like, and of course there are many different types of rook, uh, but they all generally have a similar sort of look, and of course, we just think of the chess piece, don't we? The rook. Uh, but we got the rooks with the, on on those legs there, with their arms protruding. But as you can see, a rook itself is huge. It's a massive walking monstrosity. So for well, you, stairs inside. So they, yes. I assume they assume there are people in there working and stuff. So there's no, like no, people no, who no, might. No, 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 no. There's no people because rooks are powered magically. They are magical entities. There's no people, but what there is in there is there is a rookling cocoon. So this is this is where your little buddy comes from. Because rooks have to uh, obviously uh, create new rooks. And so a rookling will be found here in a rookling cocoon, will be found here in a sleep-like state until removed. So basically... Your rookling will have come from a defeated rook, and it's just it's just a it's a little version, a little version of the big rook, and it has the similar traits of the big rook, but it's just a little but version. But they don't all become mean. We don't not necessarily. No, depends on but it depends on their life experiences. <laughs> okay. okay. There is also then there is the crystal chamber which is the rook stone housing, which is the source of the magical power and abilities. All right. It's, it's great to take a look at this and to get it again. It just fires up your imagination more, gives you an idea of potentially. So your rookling can be absolutely friendly. You are not necessarily good. You're not fighting your rookling, but there are big rooks out there that, of course, would do you harm. All right. But your rookling is attached to you. Uh, and that being the case, it wants to look after you. Okay. All right, so you're all good. So let's go back to our cards and let's see what we have. So we have the city, we know we, ha we have a prosperous city and there are rules to, for us to basically explore that city in greater depth. But I think what we'll do is we could gloss over that maybe uh, for this first one, just to get a little bit of uh, momentum going. And so maybe we can say that maybe the city is in the distance, but we're not necessarily going to go and visit it. Maybe we will concentrate on other things. But let's take a look what else we've got. We've got a door. So this door is a ruined door. Uh, a door, no ordinary door, a door between rooms in the Colossal. It's impossibly huge beyond imagining, disappearing upward into the sky. If you hadn't seen it from a distance, you would have thought it was just another wall. If it's ruined, maybe you can slip through a gap. Okay. So it's a massive door that possibly allows you to slip through into another room. So we might have to have an idea of well, what's the room like you're currently in, and maybe what would the room be like past the doorway? How long does it take you to actually go past the door? Because it's massive. It's absolutely huge, yeah? We then have a boar, and this is a dangerous boar. 
So an animal to hunt for food. The animals in the wild are strange and unfamiliar. Weird combinations of animals you might know. A boar with scales or a fowl with two sets of wings. Adventuring is hungry work. You should make time to eat. But uh, potentially this boar is going to attack you. All right. Boar, great. Uh, we then have a <laughs> stranger in unusual robes. Now, as I say... It classes it as a cultist, but it can be any mysterious stranger or character. All that you're sure of is that this character is armed. Let's find out with what weapons they are armed with and what their intent might be towards you. So let's take a look. Go to another chart here. All right, we'll take a card. And it is a diamond. So, ah, okay. So this opponent is trying to hide something from you. All right. And then the type of weapon that they might have. Is that a jack? Is going to be a melee weapon of some description. All right, so they're attempting to hide something, but they're also, uh, and if should you fight them, then they have a melee weapon. Uh, and then finally, we have the sea. And this is telling us that the sea is calm. The sea, a huge expanse of water, stretches out before you. You stand on a rocky coast or a beach looking out. The water stretches to the horizon, but beyond it, you can see the telltale columns and ceiling supporting of the supports of the colossal. It's all still within a room. All right. So those are the five cards that you have. So where are you thinking that your story is going to go? What what are you, what are you gonna what are you gonna describe? Where do you start? You have to do it in order? Nope. That's the great thing about the game, is that you don't necessarily have so to do like, it in order. So, like, we could have been adventuring to look for more stones, and we found this big door, and we decided to go through it, and then that's how we found the big city. Okay, right. So, shall we change these around? Okay. So, you're going to say you're going to go with the door being first. I like that. All right. And then you, you maybe there's a city. Now... As much as, as much as uh, the, the the game tells us that it is a functioning city, it depends what story you want to tell. Maybe you don't uh, want it to be a functioning city. Maybe you want it to be a ruined city. Maybe that is more helpful for your story. It's totally up to you. That's which is great. I mean, I feel it would be a functioning city. Okay. Which wouldn't really leave too many wild animal running around. However. I'm going to guess that a functioning city would have market stalls, mm -hmm. which would sell interesting things that maybe myself and my little poppy buddy have never seen before, such as selling the meats of exotic wild boar. Or okay. would it have to... It's it it, it 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 is saying uh, the prompt on this is that this boar is is an enemy of some kind because of the uh, diamond suit. So may, maybe it's a case of there's some sort of adventure within the city that where you're tr wanting to try and get some boar meat, but uh, actually these boars escape their pen, and uh, you have to sort of tussle one to the ground type thing. I don't know. Maybe there's something in there. Maybe you, I think you, that could happen in a city. Maybe the little butcher's um, market stall, like you were saying, they had some in in some little cages, you know, for for custom orders and whatnot. Yes. And one got out, and so now here's this little wild boar coming at us. Okay, no, this, this, this is good. Okay, so uh, and there's oh. a big fat butcher guy chasing after it, and he has a <laughs> he has a mech arm. So he's an armed guy. So he has like a third arm because, you yes. know, one has like the cleaver in it. And then the yes. other one, he could be doing something else. I would think that that would be a handy thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Get it handy thing to have if you're a butcher. 
So it's like this three-armed guy running after this boar telling people to get out of the way, and it's coming towards us. And so, I, of course, we're like... Are, are you, fr are you sort of frozen there as, as, as this no. boar? No. No? So what are you going to do? Me and Little gonna... Poppy are like, oh, cool, Butcher's got this. He's just a little ways away. Let's just pop one of our little, you know, air quotation marks glitter bomb <laughs> down. <laughs> So at least, you know, it'll kind of blind and startle the poor thing, not messing up the meat too much, but, you know, tiny little cuts here and there to at least stop it and maybe blind it for the butcher to to capture it. So so you're basically going to lob a hand grenade to take out this boar. Uh, just but it's as... not like, like today's <laughs> hand grenades. This is more of a, just a cloud of little shards of sparkly metal. Okay, I'm, just, I'm going to say hello to a geek of one's own. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. We are I just think that, that could work. We're just <laughs> in the middle of describing Sarah's ad first adventure in Colossal, the solo RPG game. Uh, so, okay, you're going to use your glitter grenade to uh, tenderize this boar <laughs> in advance of the butcher getting hold of it. That's cool. I like it. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, so has the butcher caught up with the boar? I, I, has he got hold of it now? What, what, what happens? Are you butcher did. However, while the, the boar was sit Wait, did my thing, like, completely tenderize this whole entire thing into a pile of, like, shredded meat or because in my mind it just kind of stopped it in its tracks and kind of stunned it for a bit uh, I, I i like the idea that you threw through this grenade and once the smoke uh, subsided basically you know when you you've ever been to an asian restaurant and you basically have a shredded duck we got shredded boar just nicely laid out, <laughs> totally cooked to perfection, completely shredded. Uh, if somebody would just bring some wraps and some cucumber, we're, right. we're away, yeah? <laughs> All right, then, yes. Okay, so that's what it's going to be. So when that happens, the butcher and his three arms, who's trying to run after this boar before it hurts somebody else, and, and me and my little poppy, which is, you know, my little buddy, are just kind of standing there smiling. In my dress set twirls, don't forget. Indeed. And I'm just smiling, very friendly. I think it would stop the butcher kind of in his track, and he wouldn't know quite what to do, but says, like, a questionable thank you. Do, do, well, I mean, sure, surely, uh, given that you have stopped and simultaneously cooked and prepared the boar, uh, might he then offer you some as a reward? Yes, but it took him a minute because he just didn't know quite how to take in the situation. Was it all too much? What about the crowd? How did the yeah. crowd responding to you? They Was just it... all have this kind of be bewildered look on their face like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So so, so, na so now you're, you're quite happy. I noticed none of that because, you know, me and Poppy are just on this little adventure and we've seen some stuff along the way. This is but... true. It, oh, we it, don't let that bring us down, so we're just like, all right. <laughs> it, it, it's an everyday thing for you, isn't it? These type of things. So you Look, quite... Roger knows. Roger knows exactly what's happening. I twill my dress back and forth with the pockets and have an innocent <laughs> smile on my face. Precisely. Even chat knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're but quite... Yes, I agree with Mystic. He gives us some bore. Yeah, you're quite you're quite happy now that you you have your boar pancakes. You've got a little bit of plum sauce going on there. You know they're mighty tasty. What what happens next? Why I assume because of this, now that we have some boar meat and maybe mm -hmm. some extra, he wanted some extra, so he might have to invite us back to his stall so he can wrap some up for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So now we've gone down through the market a bit more because, you know, the boar was running. So it, it was a nice little thing. So we see some other, other you know, markets and stuff along the way. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we see a, a fun shop that seems a little bit dark. And we go in there. And that's where the occultist is, is in there. He might not be working there. 
Re remember, he, he doesn't have to be a cultist. He can be anybody. So he could just be the shopkeeper, right? The only important part of this is that you know that he's, he's, he's kind of adversarial to you, that he wants to hide something from you. And let me just double check again, because I did mention... Maybe, him. maybe we notice this little spooky shop and next to the name of the shop or whatever was a familiar symbol that we remembered seeing in our mom's trunk where we found the utility belt. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, because remember, because she was an adventurer in her, in her day, which is how she knew about all the magic stones to tell us about in the beginning anyways, because it seems everybody knows about these rooks and magic stones, so I'm assuming that my character came from, or grew up in a place that did not have this stuff, or else why would they be tales of this stuff if everybody already knows about it? Right. So I assume that on my years of travel and everything, I've now come to the lands where all of this stuff is real. Oh. But it's more of, okay, I now know that this stuff must be real, but maybe I'm still on the trying to search for the rest of it, like the diamond skin. And then, like you said, the other types of the the stones that do other things. Okay, so does he does he maybe have some information because he's trying to hide something from you and he's he's not being friendly enough to give you information. So what sort of what what is he trying to hide from you? Cuz it doesn't cause, We have cause, to kind of feel it out with him because we noticed the matching symbol, but he doesn't know that we know somebody that knew about him. Right. So maybe we have to talk to him about stuff and then maybe sort of bring up, you know, why would somebody maybe have had this or something with your symbol on it? And, and then I don't know, maybe he does befriend us because he then maybe he knew my mom. Oh, oh, in like oh. a good way. There we go. Maybe he is all gruff and, and, and doesn't want to talk to you initially, but you're able to mention or show something that uh, relates to they your mom. They found that belonged to my mom. Yeah, yeah, that matched the symbol on his shop. And and suddenly this mean demeanor of his vanishes, and actually we find that he's, he's quite a nice chap uh, and does want to share some information. What information then does he have that is going to be of benefit to you? Well, he's hiding a diamond. He's actually hiding we a know whole that. diamond. Okay. He's hiding the diamond, and we know part of our mission in our mom's story was something about diamond-skinned people. Right. So okay. maybe we talk to him about the stories that, that my mom told me when I was growing up, since we've now learned that he now knows my mom, and he seems to have a pleasant demeanor towards me knowing or knowing who my mom was. Okay. So and maybe so... we tell him a little bit more of the stories we grew up or that I grew up with. So, so, so he ha he has some di this diamond, which is from the, these diamond people. But do we, so we know that they. This is maybe it's a little bit of evidence that we know that they are actually real. But where are they? And I think this this might lead nicely into your final card. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it could be just what he says, and you could use that card, couldn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe he tells us that that there were that that's real, that those stories were real about the diamond skinned warriors. Yeah. And he tries to tell us of like this land of where it is, but it's it's not anywhere near this town. Mm-hmm. And because the last card is a C, right? Yeah, I mean it's 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 across the sea. Right, so it's across the sea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, it's a so, short little story, uh, not as eloquent as yours. No, 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 no. So now you need to go and write all of that down. <laughs> uh, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for you. All right. <laughs> Okay, that's that's great. See, there you go. So from that, I mean, you know, the great thing about this game is as much as it encourages you to want to write down and to have some sort of recording, actually, we've just imagined our little story, haven't we? 
right? Mm -hmm. Just just talking it through, and we're having fun from it. And so that being the case, the game is doing everything that it's supposed to do. Um, so okay, chat. I think you're mostly following along with Sarah's uh, adventure here. But if you One have more. created oh, your own, mm -hmm. then do put it into chat. Let us know. Shall we just do another selection of cards and let's see where our next day of adventuring might take us, and then and then I think that uh, will be it. And yeah? I was gonna say, Lonar, apparently the little flakes of metal like. They would like self combust or something, therefore cooking the meat and no longer being in the meat. Because I didn't know that it was going to cook the meat, but everybody decided that it was going to cook the meat. So I think that's what happened. <laughs> so there wouldn't be little bits of metal in the meat. They just caused like little expl hot explosions. So it cut up the stuff, then hot explosion itself, which then cooked the meat. So there you go. I I I I, I, I like the sh uh, cooking and shredding of boar. Uh, <laughs> it all is one action. I think that's probably a highlight. I, and, for some, and for some reason, I keep on thinking of lots of... Um, oh, gosh. Again, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. It's the uh, anime movies from Studio Ghibli. Uh, mm -hmm. That sort of cuteness of the, villi of the cityscape. That's what uh, instantly jumped to mind for me. All right. What have we got? We have a staircase and of course this is a staircase of huge proportions i was trying to explain this over the weekend that that staircase it could take you you know hours and hours to actually just go up one step of you know step off stairs yeah and you would have full hiking and mountaineering gear to be able to accomplish that that's how huge the colossal is all right. Um, we then have some ancient ruins. Oh, we have a medium rook. So there's going to be potentially some combat here. All right. We have a card that indicates our calling. So this is a prompt. We maybe find something that is relevant to your calling. Oh, and then finally, it's a trap. All right. So let's give you a, a little bit more context on these cards. Again, these are just prompts. It's for you to determine how you actually experience these it's all on the black suits isn't it okay so a staircase uh this is a ruined staircase a staircase leading to another floor in the colossal massive and a quest in itself to climb it vanishes into the mist and clouds each step is the height of a small house who could have possibly built this This takes you to another floor of the Colossal. We then have ancient ruins, which are somewhat intact. Ruins of a people you've never heard of. Ruins of a people you've never... Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, ruins of a people you've never heard of. The unfamiliar inscriptions and architecture suggest these people lived a very long time ago. Draw an event card for something else to happen here. So we have another table. We will draw a card. We have a five. You hear a loud noise amongst the ruins. Okay. Uh, we have drawn a medium rook. So there we do have the option of basically uh, either fighting this rook or trying to avoid it altogether. Remember, a rook is a massive creature. I think what, we, what we'll do, just for uh, explaining uh, how combat works, we should fight it. We'll give it a go and we'll go through the process. All right. Uh, so try and work out 
the uh, beginning part of encountering this rook into your little story. So the, the calling, which is number nine, you come across a place that is a key to your calling. Maybe a building with a clue in it, or one of the locations that you were looking for on your quest. All right. And we then- We just did that. You kind of did it, yes. Yes, but through different means. So, but maybe this is just somewhere you're going to get another clue. Yeah. Uh, and then the trap. Maybe a hunter's trap or a pit or some old machinery. Right. What will you do now? But it does say that because it's the spades suit, you've managed to avoid it. All right. So you were lucky on that trap. So, the second set of cards with the dead body. Yes. What is, um, what's underneath that one? What's underneath the dead it's, body? What was it? It's a, ancient ruins. That, okay, uh, so first that, I think we're going to be doing card number nine. You're calling. Some, this is what I'm thinking in my mind. I don't know yeah, yeah. a storyline quite yet, but I'm thinking like we would, maybe since he told us that it was like across the sea and stuff, maybe he told us to go you know, somewhere else in town to talk to somebody who would have known my mom too. Okay. So we'll get that worked into there. And then from there, I think it'll go six. And then four. And then, because the body has to be with that one. It rem remember that it, it's not a dead body. This represents that when you go to the ancient ruins, you hear a mysterious sound. Okay, then never mind. So maybe... Okay, so maybe on our way to go talk to somebody that the occultist person sent us to, the shop owner or whatever sent us to, Yeah. we passed a trap, but according to this, we didn't fall for the trap, so we were kind of like, uh-oh. Is, 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 this, is this all within the city that you were in, or have you left the city? Well, we haven't left the city yet because technically we're supposed to go across the sea to find whatever he was talking about. Sure. So maybe uh, in the city we, we go see the number nine person, the little TP hut person, because he told us to go talk to somebody else who knew our mom. Mm-hmm. Could, could be somebody who just, just lives out on the edge of the city or... Uh, yeah, one, that the sounds good. Yeah. I mean, remember, the images that are on the cards... They are just prompts. You do not have to make it exactly that. So maybe uh, the shopkeeper said that you needed to go to uh, see one of your mom's old companions, a traveling companion maybe for some time, who li who's maybe in retirement, who lives out uh, in uh, a house in one of the other districts. Or maybe they live outside of the city. Maybe it's a couple of days' walk to get to this person. Right. Um, Probably yes. Yeah. Okay. So you. Yeah, you, about that one. So leaving the city behind, you're walking. You're walking out, and of course, you know, it's a, it's a pleasant day, and you're skipping and you're twirling your skirt because that's what you like to do, uh, to basically get to this person's um, sort of hut uh, that's out in the middle of nowhere. So how did this person know? Maybe there's your a trap in front of it oh a trap in front okay right because you don't want to just anybody coming to your house but since somebody told us who to go see they warned us about the trap which is why we didn't fall in it right okay so you see so because of your little bit of experience you managed to dodge the trap which was good all right uh, well, the shopkeeper told us like hey look out there's probably gonna be a trap out front <laughs> 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 well, 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 so, so who clearly he knows this person and there's a trap there to keep the guy safe but the guy's like but if people need to come see me for a reason they're gonna know that this trap is here and won't fall in it so that's one way to kind of do your re you know okay that's how you kind of know whether somebody is is gonna be harming you or not well it's not a guaranteed method there's been some incidences where this guy has been like, well, that didn't quite work out the way it should have. <laughs> you know, let, both let, that let, some let, bad let, people got through, but also lost a few good ones. <laughs> mistakes were made, lessons were learned. Mistakes were made. <laughs> However, 
Eighty-five percent of the time, it's it's a pretty good method because if they they have a reason to be there, they know about the trap. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. All right. So we knew about it. We almost forgot about it, but we remembered in time. Okay. So you, you avoided the trap. So you you meet the person in the cabin. Who is the person in the cabin? Ooh. I mean, definitely, maybe they, they're definitely retired, as you had said, because they're older. If they knew your mom, and, you, and we're, we're assuming right. your, mom, your mom's dead now, so... Well, yeah. What? She is? She thanks. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, your ca your right, character is right. her mom, yeah? Buck Jangles, that's a great name. <laughs> we have come to go talk to Buck Jangles. Buck Jangles. Oh, come Buck on. Buck Jangles. I, I believe I feel that we we're, we're getting a bit of a uh, collaborative uh, element here. Yeah, so. but I feel like Buck Buck Jangles is a retired um, bed and breakfast owner. I, I, I think, but just I, a very hardcore man who who was like a warrior type person who then decided to have a bed and breakfast, but now has just decided to retire. Uh, okay, okay. So. Meeting... And that's how he would have known her mom. She might have stayed there for a while on her adventures. Okay, now this is good. Okay, so Buck Jangles, what piece of, what clue, a part of your calling do they have to share with you? He has a diamond skinned leg. He has a diamond skinned leg. But not like the whole leg, just a little bit of the skin is diamond. Oh, is this actually his leg, or he has a, a leg as an ornament that he puts? Yeah, up, like up, his leg. Oh. So, like, he's not necessarily, like, a full diamond warrior. But let's say while he was warrioring, he did some stuff, right? Yeah. And he did something to earn that little patch, right? But then due to an injury or something, he had to kind of retire from that line of work, and he decided to go into the bed and breakfast business. Which is how he told my mom about tales and stuff of the diamond warrior skinned warriors. Okay, uh, Ro Rogue has just suggested that um, your um, sunflower thinks that her mother is dead, but really she's just missing, looking for the diamond people. Right. So you, your character. So maybe this is a bit of a hidden backstory, Rogue, that we haven't quite found out yet. Uh, that actually mo uh, mom is still alive and uh, vent and venturing onwards. Uh, and Mystical was just going to say something similar. Okay, right. It's good that people are having the same sort of creative ideas. Uh, Lorna saying he used to be an adventurer until he took a diamond to the knee. <laughs> he indeed, possibly so. Okay, so we, we, everyone seems to be sort of pitching on in here. We're getting a we're getting a good uh, sort of story going. Diamond is... warrior? Did she reach that level of warrior? <laughs> no, we're getting off track of the cards. <laughs> it's okay. We're still we're still within we're within, within um was in book's story, wasn't it? So what what does book then tell you? He has the diamond knee. Uh, is he going to tell you where to go next? What? What's? What? Uh... Sorry, what was that? Um, I assume he is going to tell us. We're going to sit and talk about my mom or whatever, and maybe apparently my mom's not dead. Yes. Which, of course, is a massive revelation for Sunflower. Right. It's like what? <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure the letter in the mail said that that she was off and found dead. That's it. But, but maybe she was went off on a deed? Is that what the letter said? It was smudged. <laughs> oh, so the letter was smudged, so maybe she was off doing a deed and she was not off doing a dead? It, did it say, Dear Sunflower... I, I, I'm afraid to tell you that I that I am d, d, d on a deed. <laughs> but, but she read it as I am dead. Lots yeah, of, it was like Sunflower. I mean, it's been a few years. Lots of But it was something mom. like Sunflower, I'm so sorry. I won't be home for your birthday. I'm dead. But maybe it was I'm off doing a deed, but my. Mudgy fingers ruined it. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, no, I, I'm, I'm liking looking this. Adventuring, so I would have never gotten another letter to know that she was still alive. 
Because she wouldn't have known that I left the house. <laughs> so so back back at your house, there are piles and piles of letters uh, through the oh door. Oh my god, she's going to think I never wrote back because I was mad she missed my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, so the revelations that mom is still alive... Wow, that that's that's okay. But so does Buck Jangles know where your mom was last? That's the important point. Um I mean, I think that he might might be telling us better on how to get towards um our goal of Which finding is... these warrior diamond people because that's probably where my mother is. Okay, so the, well, the last one the person said they were across the sea. So where after you go across the sea, where might you have to go then? Hold on one second. I'm I'm loving all of the oh. contributions from chat here. This is all very good. Yeah, I'm deed. I had something about a deed and won't make it home. And so, yeah, like, so I, my character probably thought that she was dead and wasn't ever going to come home. <laughs> was kind enough to write me a letter as she was dying. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So, the the mysterious sound goes with the, the ancient it's, ruins. It's, uh... Right? That's what it went with. Yes, it did, yes. Okay, so I assume that this man is going to tell us that we're going to need to go up some s these giant steps. That will be a few days' journey. It would indeed, yes. It's, that's a monumental... To find some ruins. Yes. But on our way to the stairs, because we don't know what's in the ruins yet and all that, we don't want to get past that part. That's going to be our ending point, right? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, before the stairs, as we leave to go... To go find these stairs, maybe that's when we encounter the rock. the um the queen card. That way, we can do that before the end of stream because stream's about to end. Indeed. Okay. Now this is this is good. This is good. This is really good. So on now, the way to the giant stairs. <laughs> on, on the way to the giant stairs, you encounter the rook. All right. So combat. Uh, again, it's. Nice and easy uh, to explain. It It is a series of cards that are going to be placed down to give you the prompts to be able to describe how the combat actually happens. All right. So, can you remember what was your combat score? Uh, three. Three, okay. Let's just make sure I get this right. So then... First of all, we are up against a rook. So a medium rook is the size of a small car or a small a, a car or a small building. So that gives you an idea of just how big it is. So that's that's you know hopefully manageable. So first of all, we draw a card to consult what type of rook it is, as in the type of magic. And it is a heart, so it's a rumble type of rook. So maybe this is a rook that pounds its feet or beats its hands, uh, to which it causes either thunderous claps or uh, tremors through the land, which would then uh, take you off your feet, uh, give you an idea of the type of attacks it's going to do, all right? And we then have to do a card for its body type. And it is a five, so it's definitely an aggressive, it's an attacking rook. All right, it's. I mean, let's be honest, so I just found out that my mom's alive after just misreading a messed up letter. So, really, I don't think anything stands a chance against me, though. I, 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 I think you, you, you could be uh, secretly just amazing at this, so we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so we know what type, so we know it's going to attack, then we need to find out what type of weapon it has. And it is a force, so it's ranged. 
So, you know, we talked about um, it's going to be a rumbling type, and maybe it is. It's Maybe it's clapping of its hands causes great shock waves that, uh, like sonic booms, that uh, take you off your feet or burst your eardrums because they are so powerful. So, give you some ideas there. Okay, so that gives you an idea. That is the type of rook that you are fighting. Now then, you said you have three cards. So first of all, to actually fight, you draw a number of cards equal to your combat score. So we draw three. One, two, and three. And then we have to draw three cards, which is the combat score of the actual rook. So one, two, Three. Oh, not good, not good. All right, so combat is pretty simple. Basically what you do is you allocate your cards to the attacks of what the rook is doing. And so long as the value of your card is greater than that of the rooks, it means that you are successful in combat. So let's just work now. The ace counts as one. So what we want to do is we want to swap our attacks around so that we place cards that are going to be greater than the Rook's attacks. Well, mine are. I think they are, <laughs> aren't they? I think uh, it's, it's equal yeah, or greater. Yeah, because the 5 greater. beats the 4, the 9 beats the 8, the 9 also beats the 5. Oh, no, no, sorry, no, not these cards, these cards oh, here. Oh, the bottom cards. Yes, yes, yes. So Wait, am I top or bottom? Wait, what? You're, you're top, and the rook is bottom. So your five does beat the ace. Your nine is equal to the nine, but your queen is obviously one less than the king. So basically, this first part, you would win. You would land a blow. This second part is that... Uh, is, is a clash so that neither of you take any damage. And this third part would be that the rook actually did damage to you. So basically, it's it's one all, isn't it? Uh, and essentially, to win, you basically have to do uh, the majority of attacks you've got to defeat. Well, actually, that's even. Let me just find out what happens when it says it's even. So, in fact, I would say that we would probably have to draw cards again. This is, is a strange situation that we've actually come out as the same. There's no clear winner here. So it's either, so we make sort of thematic sense that we've been fighting. So this is where you would just start describing it, that you're trading blows, and as you uh, hit it, it hits back to you, and you're even, and you basically maybe both uh, break apart, and you're sort of weighing one another up. We'll draw cards again, and see what we get. Oh. Oh, they don't look good. Okay, my oh, dogs okay. are about to go crazy. <laughs> so here we go, new, new set of cards. Uh, ultimately, your three is better than the two, your three is better than the ace, but this queen is better than your four, but you've got two hits against its one hit. So you would defeat this rook in this round of combat. And again, it's up to you then how you would describe that combat to be. Uh, you using your scythes to basically uh, slash at the rook's legs, uh, your little rookling, uh, you had a different, a type of m magical energy. What was it? It, it? it was rumble as well, wasn't it? Did you go for rumble on your rookling? Um, I went with electric. Electric. So there you go. So you could be using your electric ability against the rook from the rookling, who's joining you in the combat, mm -hmm. and ultimately you manage to defeat the rook. And of course, it, it collapses on the ground. And then there's opportunity for you to basically scavenge from it. And hopefully, 
you are able to find its rook stone, uh, which is the magical essence uh, within it. We can get parts, whatever he wants. And we get some parts, things like that, maybe some salvage, right? So that's, you've done that. And then, of course, that little bit of combat feeds back up into the continuation of the story of you exploring that staircase. And then, ultimately, we have the ancient ruins where maybe when you get to the the ruins, you then hear this mysterious sound. Full stop. And then we start right. the next part of the adventure. So there you go. That gives you an idea of how it plays. Obviously, the bit that we've sort of skipped upon is the writing element. <laughs> but we've been describing it uh, to one right. another, so we, so we get an idea. And I think... You know, even the one that I worked on, I spent a little bit of time thinking about it, and I had the cards, and I thought of different possible things. You know, again, the, the important part of a solo role-playing game is you are doing it for yourself. It is your adventure to entertain you. So it's, you know, nice to sort of have these, these cards to give you the prompts to go, well, where do I want the adventure to go? What type of challenges do I want my character to face? Uh, I don't want it to be easy all the time, but I want to have some rewards at some point, but I need to face some challenges to make those rewards deserving. Uh, and I think that, like, how we were doing it, like, for, like, my character, we all decided, it seems, it was a unanimous thing in chat that we were going to try to make it the most fun and positive experience for this person versus... Uh, uh, dark and gloomy the whole time and it's kind of cool that you could do it either way the great thing about this is that yes this can be whatever you want and also as far as um you know your uh what's a, a writing quality age you know this i think this this game works perfectly fine with people of all ages um i could well imagine that sitting down with the family to actually play this game uh, would be great because again it's just prompt everybody can see the same cards everybody can have a different adventure um, everyone can have different characters and it's whatever um, adventure that they want to go on um, and you know just take have a little bit of fun just writing um, uh, what, what the, their character experiences I, I really really do uh, enjoy it i think it's a lot of fun uh it's something i i will continue to play i'll just do a little bit each day um maybe not, not right necessarily right as much as i did uh, earlier but and it's good practice just to uh to keep that sort of creative writing flowing a little bit yeah right? it's, yeah your story was really good <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah, for, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you to everybody in, I in did. chat. And maybe in your future stories for your character, another a glitter bomb meat barbecue cookout will happen. <laughs> maybe so. I do think that's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me to play. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Take care. Have a good, Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Okay, so there we go. That was our live play of Colossal, the solo RPG adventure game. Thank you, everybody, for taking part. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed playing it. Uh, do go and check it out. It is a really, really lovely little game. It's one that you can play at your own speed, um, just dipping back into whenever you want to. And... Uh, who knows what adventures you may find uh, yourself on. So thank you so much for playing. Uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. We are going to be taking a look at a role-playing game that is uh, launching imminently. Uh, we will be asking ourselves the question, uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? That is what we will be exploring tomorrow evening from 7 o'clock GMT. I hope you will join me then. But until then, bye for now.